Hi, so in this video I'm going to cover the four different types of hyperopia. Now I'm going to be referring to a video by um, OpsoInfo, so that's O-P-H-O Info, two separate words, that, that's the guy's channel, um, and he's an, in, uh, he's an ophthalmic intern, so he's training basically. Um, and he does um, he does videos that um, would appeal to people interested in optometry, uh, opticians, uh, because he talks about his academic training a lot. So in this video he describes the four different types of hyperopia. And I love the way he does this because he describes it very simply and clearly. And what I'm going to be doing in turn is describing how I experience uh, those types of hyperopia. So the four different types are absolute, facultative, manifest and latent uh, in, in that order kind of going from you know not uh, not not so long sighted to very long sighted, so they go in an order, and people generally have all four of them at any one time because hyperopia very often is a developing uh, condition. I mean, sometimes with young children they start squinting. Uh, you do a test to find out exactly how much they have and give them the full extent of their glasses so that, you know they get right to the end of their prescription quite quickly but for most people um, it, it isn't picked up straight away and um, so they don't get glasses to cover the the full amount straight away that develops over time um, so in in his words um, absolute hyperopia is the smallest amount of plus that you need uh, to be able to read the 2020 line um, and then if you put more plus on um, during the eye test you you'd get manifest hyperopia so that's the most plus um, that the highest plus that the person can take at that time to read the 2020 line so say you needed um, a plus one to see the 2020 line clearly but you could still see it at a plus three so your plus one is your absolute your plus three is your manifest and what's in between those two is facultative hyperopia so I guess that's the amount of um, you know your range of accommodation between those two states um, now there may be more hyperopia there which hasn't developed and that is where the latent hyperopia comes in so I'm going to describe it um, as it happened in the eye test I had recently. So I'm going to start going backwards a bit. So I'm going to start with the manifest hyperopia um, because when I was tested, um, what he did, he, he started me with the glasses I was wearing and then he put the Feropta um, up first, so he, he raised the power first um, to a point where, um, you know, the highest plus that I could see. And that, that was around about a plus 10. And what happened, um, certainly with the left eye, when it got to that point, um, the left eye kind of started pulling in a bit um, which, which is fine because it has a tendency to travel out a little bit so that's in my case it, it's no problem that it pulled in for other people it might be um, but for me it was that was absolutely fine 
but it pulled in a little bit and I started seeing the image quite a lot clearer. Not perfectly clear, but it started clearing up at that point. It was like it had, you know, hit a sweet spot. Uh, my right eye, I think, was a little bit lower at the time, um, nearer about an, an eight. Um, but anyway, after that, you know, he'd taken it up as high as it would go, took it a bit higher, it was blurry. So then he slowly worked back down and um, we got to about four and a three and what happened then was I saw it clearly but it gently faded out. So it wasn't the normal sort of twitch that, that I have. I just calmly saw it and then it gently faded away. It was like my eyes and my brain had just decided to disconnect once they'd seen it. Um, then we got down to a plus two um, and I saw that very clearly, way too clearly. It was really, you know, in your face, over bright, uh, sore eyes and it just started wobbling because that that was way too sharp and nasty for me so I guess my you know so that would be bringing me down to my absolute hyperopia um, so I would say maybe a bit above a two actually because the two was just so nasty um, so between shall we say a 2.5 for argument's sake and uh, let, let's average it out at, at, a, at a 9 between both eyes. That would be my facultative hyperopia and I was accommodating back and forth quite a lot between those two um, all, all the time. So, you know, I have things fading in and out quite a lot. Um, but then, so that was maybe about a month ago. Uh, what's happened since then, um, because I was wearing, um, is it seven and a half, eight and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half at the time. So I've had to go up to my 10. My left eye, I can tell it wants higher. So I think, this is where the latent hyperopia comes in. So I've gone to what was, um, you know, discovered as my manifest hyperopia. So I've got tens on now, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to need something a, a bit higher. I can feel my left eye complaining that it needs something higher. So there's certainly a bit of latent hyperopia in, in there as, as well. So, um, you know, as, as it stands, um, I have a couple of diopters prescribed for an ad. So I'm going into those and then I probably need something higher than that again, but, you know, I can negotiate um, that. So, you know, we, we'll see. But those are the four types of hyperopia as um, you know, I experienced them, and I would definitely advise you, advise you to look at um, the, this channel. It's called Optho Info. Um, so I I really liked it. It's nice, clear, simple ex explanations, and it it is geared a bit more to the academically minded, you know, people who might be on. Uh, you know, optometry or ophthalmic courses anyway. So, yeah, um, hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe and hope to see you in my next video.